Hello AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here. We're going to take a look at our second video covering what we call Unit 9B, which is all about vector valued functions, uh, encompasses topics 9.4 through 9.6 of the AP Calculus College Board CD. We're in topic 9.4 here, just at the beginning of that unit. I'm going to take a look at example two, and we're going to introduce this idea called component form uh, for vectors. We're going to revisit the idea of magnitude. So what do we have going on here? Well, it says here that a line segment whose initial point is the origin and whose terminal point is some ordered pair we'll call, for the sake of argument, v sub 1 comma v sub 2, is given by the component form of vector v as v equal v1 comma v2. Now I want to point out something here. It's it's not altogether incorrect and I've seen this many times where notation will be used that depicts a vector and if you watched video example one we talked about how the bold face lowercase letter means a vector. But it's not in my opinion the best practice to use parentheses around this pairing of v sub 1 and v sub 2. And you're going to notice that I'm going to do a little bit of something different as we move through these videos. And I'm going to use what's called the uh, the uh, vector notation, or sometimes I'll call these vector brackets. Uh, because it's just, it denotes a little bit more clearly that we're dealing with a vector here and not just an ordered pair. And it's just, I think, in my opinion, a bit a, a better, safer practice. And when you use these uh, particular vector brackets, um, this is what we kind of refer to as the component form. And um, the V value, V1 and V2 V values are going to be called the specific components. So to convert a directed line segment to a component form or vice versa, we just really use the following strategy here. Let's say that we have an ordered pair P that consists of the points P1 and P2, the ordered pair Q that consists of Q1 and Q2, then V represented by PQ in component form, very similar to what we talked about in the previous video, is just a matter of subtracting the X value from the destination point. Remember, we're going from P to the destination Q minus the X value of the original or starting point. And so that's why we have this Q1 minus P1 right here. And then the Y component is treated the same way, Q2 minus P2. The length of vector V we talked about is denoted as the magnitude of V, use these double brackets, and you can see how we're just basically using the distance formula here. But what's cool about this with vectors is that you've already done the subtraction of the X values to get that Q1 minus P1 component. And so you just simply need to square that number that's residing into that position. And that's what's going to go in this spot. And likewise, Q2 minus P2 is going to go into the second spot. Remember, you're going to square those, add them, and then take the square root. Again, that's what we call the magnitude of V. And then we have this other idea that if vector V is denoted as V1, V2 in component form, then V can be represented by the directed line segment in standard position that goes from the point 0, 0 to the ordered pair Q that would have been denoted by the ordered pair V1, Q, V1, V2, which it's not written here. It was written up above, or we referred to it maybe. Uh, as such. And basically, you're going to find out that when we work with vectors, we really like to start at 0, 0. It makes our lives so much easier to do that. A lot of times you're going to have two points, a P and a Q, that start in very strange locations. Uh, the P is not going to be at the origin, and maybe Q is somewhere up here. Well, that's just fine, because what we can do is just kind of rework that vector and start it so that the P is at the origin and the Q is going to have a different point. But if it has the same magnitude and if it has the same direction, it's an equivalent vector. And we find that they're much easier to work with. So let's take a look at our example. Find the component form of the length of the vector V that has the initial point 4, negative 6, and the terminal point uh, negative 1, 2. And so to do that, vector V using our notation 
is just simply going to be, we use our vector bracket right there, and then we can start with our uh, taking the, um, the uh, component form, negative 1 uh, minus 4, first of all. And then we'll start the terminal point 2 and subtract the initial point y component, which is 6. And once we do this cleaning up, we have negative 5, comma, 8. And that would be our component form for that particular vector. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, well, what about the I and the J form? Maybe you've taken a physics class and you've used that, or maybe your trick class used I and J. Um, sometimes we call that linear combination form. We're going to talk about that. It's a perfectly viable usage of representing vectors. You could even do that on the AP calculus exam. You don't have to, but that's going to come up in a later video. So for right now, I'm going to leave this at negative 5, 8 in component form. The the problem did not ask us to find the magnitude, but if we had to find the magnitude, all you would need to do is take the square root of the sum of the squares of these two components. And again, I say that because the subtraction has already been performed for you. So in this particular case, I think you'd get the square root of 25 plus 64 which I believe is 89. I'm not so sure that there's much that we can do with that. I'm just going to leave that alone anyhow. So I hope this helps out a little bit. Uh, again, we're just gradually getting you guys a little bit more acclimated to the idea of vectors with each example that we do before we hit the really good calculus stuff. Thanks for joining and we'll see you next time.